it's me. <laughs> we haven't done that in a really long time, so I figured I was gonna go ahead and get started on Leverage uh, Redemption. Um, I'm saving this because I want to hear your feedback on regular leverage first before I dig into this. So if I did this for nothing, then that's fine. First, I wanted to make sure you're feeling okay. Uh, you didn't tell me what was very cryptic, so I was a little concerned. Um, but I hope you're feeling okay or better or whatever. Um, definitely let me know what's going on with you. Um, okay, so Leverage Redemption. Um, leverage Redemption takes place nine years, eight or nine years after the, um, after the events of the end of Leverage. Um, you find out very early on within the first like three minutes that there is no more Nate. Nate has died. Um, they are showing this a year after Nate died. Um, and it pretty much starts off with, you know, Sophie's grieving process and stuff like that. She is in, in um, Boston, which is where he likes to be. So they're, they went back to Boston. They went from Portland, Oregon. They went back to Boston because that's his place and stuff like that. Um, and the good thing about it is that like it kind of, it helps you at least first feel the nine years. And then after that, it um, kicks right back in to what it was doing. Um, there's uh, lots of Star Trek references in the very first episode. The first episode is Too Many Rembrandts. Um, and we meet the ever wonderful Noah Wiley, who um, plays Harry Wilson. He is a lawyer who has been on the wrong side of the law for a good long while and thought he was on the right side of law um, until he met, like, I think Reed Diamond is the, is the bad guy here, who is wonderfully bad in, like, fucking everything he does, and I love him to death for his badness. Um, so, Reed Diamond is our big bad in this episode. Um, you're going to, um, somewhere in the middle, meet R.I.Z. R.I.Z. is the overarching season big bad. They are a, uh, a contingency that uh, they're in the field of violence is what Bly, who is the main leader chick thing, who um, does it where it's pretty much like they, they create a bunch of Elliots very early on. Um, it's, there's a, a fight scene in this that Elliot literally choreographs and watching the whole thing like go is kind of genius with how they... Um, do the whole thing. Like he, it, I feel like it takes him longer to, to explain the fight sequence than to actually have it, which I think is fantastic. Um, they have a moment, like I said, Star Trek references, where they are like, you know, um, even numbers only, baby. Uh, this show does not mess around with its love for Star Trek and Doctor Who, for that matter. Um, so. You basically get back into the swing. You're trying to redeem Harry and get back at Reed Diamond. And um, just digging back into it is kind of great. There's a lot of fun little sequences where uh, Hardison talks about masterpieces. You basically do find out how Nate died. Um, and it, it just has effects on the team. Um, so it's interesting how they have reverence. Um, one little thing that you'll notice is that they did not do a good job with Parker's makeup in this. If you actually, once we get into the season, you'll see that like in the third episode, it's like Parker knows how to film and do makeup and by the third episode, she looks like the way like the actress actually looks, but in the rest of the season, they do shit for her makeup. <laughs> like our makeup is garbage and it makes her look exhausted. Um, so, you know, like I said, uh, earlier I had mentioned to you how Hardison is in place. So, um, by the end of episode two, Hardison kind of goes on leave. You'll find out why he leaves. Um, but he goes on leave to go do Hawkman in Black Adam or something. But he has a great, like, everything that he's in in the first two episodes is amazing. So that's episode one. Um... There's a nice little speech at the end from Hardison about um, the Jewish faith and how redemption is a process and stuff like that. Um, in the second episode, very early on, you see little drones following them everywhere. 
um, and you're like, ooh, who could a drone be? Well, very early on, you discover that the drone is actually Hardison's little sister, Brianna. Um, and if you remember, Hardison is adopted. A woman named Nana adopted uh, all these kids and stuff like that. Um, so you meet Brianna, and there is a fan, I swear to God, I rewind it every time it plays. There's a fantastic scene where Hardison and um, Brianna are talking to each other, and he's like, does Nana know where you are? And then she goes off onto this speech about how the way he hacks is old school. If you watch that scene and look in the background at Elliot's face for everything, it is priceless because between um, Hardison and her reaction and Elliot losing his mind in the background, it is, I, I feel like, one of the best scenes in this entire um, season. But it's fantastic. Um, Brianna gets into the con for the first time. Basically what happened is in the first episode, you know, they got Reed Diamond, but then he ran away. Um, and they're in Panama to try and get him. Dan Cortez, fuck, remember Dan Cortez from like VH1, I sh I, v MTV, VH1, one of those things from back in the day is like the big bad here. Like fucking Dan Cortez. Like I had to like look him up and be like, that can't be Dan Cortez, is it? It is. And, um, He's all like silver fox and badass and stuff like that. I kind of think it's great. Um, but they also do like a, um, a little funny commentary on like the EDM movement and stuff like that. Um, it's really, uh, I liked it. I thought it was cute how they did the whole thing. There's that whole, um, you basically learn that through this time off that Parker, Hardison and Elliot have been cross training each other and like how to, you know, Parker's been training them how to do vents. Um, Elliot's been training them how to fight. Hardison's been training them how to hack. Like all kinds of fun and like various um, wonderfully geeky stuff. Um, somewhere in the beginning of the episode, they're in Panama and pay attention to Hardison and, um, and Sophie introducing themselves to the judge pay attention to the names that they use. It's It was a nice little callback. It was like, oh, hey, you didn't forget. Um, so it was, it was cool. Uh, I liked the episode because it, it, it does have like a nice little bit of redemption to it. Again, like I said, at the end of the second episode, Hardison is, um, he has to go away so that he can help more people. He just, uh, the head chef can't be chopping lettuce which is kind of like what he's doing in the leverage team versus what he's doing for the rest of the universe. Um, so that's, it, it's weird. And like, I was very hesitant for it because I was like, bitch, you ain't, Bri you ain't Hardison. Like Brianna, you ain't Hardison, but she does a good job. Um, the next episode, I'm going to do three. The next episode is called Rolling on the River. That's the one I was talking about where, where um, Parker is amazing in that one where she is like a Southern belle and she's trying to get this guy. And like, it's interesting how you watch little darkness parts of um, Parker kick in and like they toe the line of like saying, of making Parker a big bad to the big bad um, in that episode. Um, it's a cool little con how they do it. Um, it's interesting how Brianna has like, Brianna's perspective, Brianna's very young in this, obviously. Um, so Brianna's perspective is like, I wanted to learn everything. Like I want to do everything. And they're like, look, you gotta, you gotta get good at everything first before we can, you know, let you out into the world. Um, there's a whole <laughs> scene with numbing cream that is hysterical. Um, Brianna is actually really good at the physical comedy of the various things like she's uh just hysterical as far as everything she does physically um so there's a lot of fun little scenes that happen there there are scenes with elliot oh there's there's callbacks there's a point where elliot is basically a security guard and um there's callbacks to previous episodes that i'm sure you i don't know if you've watched all of them but there's callbacks to them um they there's a callback to an episode i don't think that you watched um, where basically they have to, the, the entire team has to go ahead and, and help with a wedding for the mob or something. 
I, I don't think I had you watch that one because I didn't think it was that great. But there's a lot of callbacks in this episode to that, like lemon juice and the culinary experience and blah, blah, blah. So um, it's because, you know, who the big bad truly is in the third episode, it's good. But uh, as I mentioned, Parker is the best in this because she has to do a Southern Belle. What I really enjoyed about this episode is that they have like, you're, you're trying to figure out how did Parker become so good? Parker, who is not good at people at all, how did Parker become so good at being like the roper and a grifter and stuff like that? And you ultimately discover that her and Hardison worked out like a decision tree for how to like deal with people. And I like the concept of that, that, that basically, you know, you have this person who, um, through constant education from someone who does have high EQ, um, has learned how to handle people. Now, granted, um, it's not the way that the real world works, but I like the concept of she tried really hard. Um, and that's where she came to, but she, she does it really well. Um, and then watching Harry and all of that is cute too. Um, so anyway, those are the first three episodes. Let me know if you, uh, like them and then we can keep moving forward. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.